Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the new developments at the LTO. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers on the Zipper Rule. This week's spying Chopper shall be about following loading and unloading rules. Showcase this week shall have the pickup truck from Mazda, the BT53L4x2AT. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motor in Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Strata athlete, confident to the core. to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The DPWH and Enlets Corporation continue to work together to provide alternate routes to help ease motoring and traffic congestion in Bulacan. Motorers are now benefiting from the newly opened two-lane service road that provides a new alternate route for those going from Maikawayan to Marilao in Bulacan. The Maikawayan Marilao service road was built by the Department of Public Works and Highways using a portion of the right-of-way of the NLEX in Barangay Lias of Marilao. This is part of DPWH efforts to improve the road network and decongest traffic in major thoroughfares in Bulacan, which has seen a rise in vehicle traffic as the province's economy develops and its population increases. The new service road is expected to draw vehicles off from the main Maikawayan Marilao corridor as it bypasses busy MacArthur Highway and other congested thoroughfares. Motorists from Paso de Blas, Valenzuela City can go straight to Lias, Marilao, Bulacan using the service road. The service road is expected to improve traffic flow at the Maikawayan interchange, especially during peak hours, and provide an alternate route for motorists traveling between Iba, Liptong, Malhakan, and Pandayat in Maikawayan, and Dias, Ibayo, Saog, and Dambakin in Marilao. Earlier, the Maikawayan East Service Road was open connecting Liptong and Maikawayan City and Lawang Bato in Valenzuela City. The cooperation between the DPWH and NLEX Corporation is a good example of how the government and the private sector can work together for the benefit of the public. The motoring public can get to experience the faster, safer, and more efficient service of the MRT3 for free at least for a month, following its complete rehabilitation and upgrade. President Rodrigo Duterte announced that the MRT3 will be offering free rides to the public from March 28 to April 30 during the ceremony marking the successful completion of the rail system's massive and comprehensive rehabilitation. Department of Transportation Secretary Artogada said that the free ride is meant to showcase the improved services of the rail line following the completion of the MRT3 rehabilitation project undertaken by the DOTR railway sector, the MRT3 management and its maintenance provider Sumitomo MHITSP. Secretary Tugari added that this is also meant to ease the financial burden of the riding public, especially amidst the inflation, rising fuel prices, and with many Filipino workers now returning to on-site work. 
the MRT3 rehab project covered the restoration of all its 72 light rail vehicles, the replacement of rail tracks, and rehabilitation and upgrade of its power supply, overhead catenary system, communication and signaling system, as well as its stations and depot facilities and equipment. MRT3 trains can now operate at a maximum of 60 km per hour compared to 25 before the rehabilitation. The system can now also run 23 trains simultaneously instead of just 13, the lowest number pre-pandemic. Headway or waiting time between trains has also been reduced from an average of 10 minutes to just 3.5 minutes. The MRT3 ridership attained an average of 260,000 passengers pre-pandemic as the system was being rehabilitated. This reached 280,000 under pandemic restrictions. The MRT3 aims to attain a ridership of 600,000 per day with all the improvements working and with 23 trains running at the same time. Many believe that the only way that traffic congestion can be solved is to wean the people away from using cars to taking public transport. And the only way to do this is to provide an efficient, convenient, and comfortable public transportation network. An efficient commuter train should help with this. Commuters may again be able to benefit from the Skyway, and perhaps those who like shopping online. Beginning on April 1, all Class 2 vehicles, buses, and closed vans exceeding 7 feet in height and with valid auto sweep RFID stickers were allowed back on the entire elevated Skyway system. This came after the completion of major construction works that would allow them to again safely use the Skyway system, according to San Miguel Corporation subsidiary Skyway O&M Corporation or SOMCO. The construction of the NLEX elevated extension in Muntilupa necessitated the use of a temporary steel access ramp at the Alabang Viaduct, which were only safe for light vehicles, Somco explained. This was why Class 2 vehicles were temporarily restricted from using the highway. Somco said that beginning April, buses can enter and pass through the Skyway elevated sections spanning Alabang to Bikutan, Bikutan to Buendia, and Buendia to Balintawa. They can also access the new SLEX elevated extension and Naya Expressway. SMC President Ramon Ang said that reopening of the Skyway to public buses and select transport trucks may allow motorists and commuters from both north and south to benefit from the convenience provided by the entire Skyway system. He is also hopeful that this will help decongest public roads, given that we are now back to pre-pandemic levels of traffic. Many expect that buses and delivery trucks should benefit from faster, albeit to some expense, passage on the Skyway system. Somco said strict rules will be imposed to maintain smooth traffic flow and ensure the safety of all Skyway motorists with the return of buses and delivery trucks on the Skyway. Careful and extensive planning was done to ensure the preparedness of Skyway plazas, toll booths, patrols, and Somco staff for the return of buses and delivery vans, it added. SMC has always said that the Skyway was planned and constructed to include the possible establishment of bus rapid transit systems. This development could pave the way for this. Metro Pacific and its subsidiaries have made sustainable development and protection of the environment part of their corporate philosophy and vision. An LEED certification validates efforts to pursue this advocacy. Metro Pacific Tollway South Management Corporation, or MPT South, has been awarded a LEED Gold Certification for its headquarters, the MPT South Hub. The MPT South Hub is a subsidiary of Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation, or MPTC the Toll Road Development Arm of Metro Pacific Investments Corporation, or MPIC. LEED, or Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, is a globally recognized symbol of excellence in green building. The LEED Gold Certification recognized the MPT South Hub's commitment to building sustainable infrastructure in alignment with MPTC's and MPIC's sustainability efforts guided by the United Nations Sustainability Goal Target of upgrading all industries and infrastructure for sustainability, according to Roberto Bontilla, MPT South President and General Manager. The MPT South Hub building has a biophilic design with a full view of the outside surroundings and natural daylight and ventilation. The hub consumes at least 40% less indoor water with the use of modern water efficient fixtures and 50% less outdoor water through rainwater harvesting. According to MPIC Chairman and President Manny Pangalinan, the LEED Gold Certification is a testament to how serious Metro Pacific is in integrating sustainability in the way it builds and operates its businesses in hope of safeguarding a resilient and sustainable future for generations to come. Sustainability is a catchphrase used by many corporations, although it must be said that few can truly say that they are living up to that very worthy advocacy. That can't be said of MPT South, MPIC, and MPTC. Mm -hmm. 
Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The Land Transportation Office has been particularly active with new developments at the start of the year. Motoring Forum discusses the significance of these developments. When Art Togada assumed office as the Transportation Department Secretary, among his first mandates to line agencies under him was to provide more efficient, expeditious, and transparent services to their clientele. Secretary Tagade also directed DOTR line agencies to work to bring themselves closer to the public. Now, even into the DOTR secretary final months in the office, the LTO continues to fulfill those mandates. Earlier this year, the LTO opened a new licensing center at the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange. The new licensing center is a one-stop LTO satellite office where drivers can register with the land transportation management system, apply for new licenses, renew expiring ones, or get student permits. It also has a test drive facility. During its inauguration, Secretary Tagada cited how it can especially benefit overseas Filipino workers and seafarers with limited time to renew licenses, especially those from Region 4A or the provinces of Cavite, Laguna, Padangas, Rizal, and Quezon. Another new LTO district office inaugurated recently is the one in Candon, which can serve drivers and motor vehicle owners in Ilocosur. Aside from Candon City, the geographical area of responsibility of LTO Candon includes the municipalities of Santa, Narvacan, Nagbukel, Santa Maria, San Esteban, Burgos, Santiago, Lidlida, Banoyoyo, San Emilio, Galimuyod, Salcedo, Gregorio del Pilar, Quirino, Santa Lucia, Santa Cruz, Tagudin, Sigay, Suyo, Cervantes, Alilem, and Sugpon. During the inauguration, Secretary Togada encourages staff and rank and file of the LTO Candon District Office to always observe discipline and to render honest and efficient public service. Candon Mayor Eric Son Singson expects the new LTO Candon office to aid efforts of the city to grow the local economy, provide more business opportunities, and encourage capital inflow and more investments. Over in Bacoor, Cavite, another new LTO district was inaugurated at a site that Secretary Tagadi wants to become a hub for public services and functions related to motoring and transportation. During its inauguration, the Transport Secretary directed officials of the LTO and the LTFRB to work together at the same site. Envisioning the LTO District Office site to become a central hub for the needs of motorists, vehicle owners, and transport operators, Secretary Togade wants it also to have a motor vehicle inspection center in the driving school. The new office will serve residents of Bacoor and nearby areas who heretofore had to travel far to get licenses and registrations renewed and other LTO services. The LTO is making it easier for its clientele, like drivers, motor vehicle owners, transport operators, and others, to process applications and benefit from its services, as well as making its services more transparent and free from graft and corruption. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Confident to the core. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. In line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. As seen on the animation, kapag ang traffic ay nagmerge sa single lane, vehicles must emerge alternately. Ito ay tinatawag na zipper rule. Matutong magbigay daan sa iba and wait for your turn.
Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Bayang Chuper this week. Bayang Chuper lang, kaibigan. Ako po si Jake. Isang kapwa niyo, Chuper. Loading and unloading ng mga pasero sa tamang lugar lamang gawin. May tamang lugar para magbaba at magsakay ng pasahero. Kaya doon ihinto ang iyong sasakyan. Iwasan makaabala sa ibang motorista, kaya itabi mo ang sasakyan mo. Huwag sa gitna ng daan pumarada. Huwag ka nang dumagdag sa problema natin sa kalsada. Matuto kang sumunod sa batas trapiko. Kung ayaw mong maabala, huwag ka ring mangabala. Makisama ka, kaya't huwag basta humarang sa kalsada. Ito po si Jay Gonzalez, payong chopper lang kaibigan, mula sa isang kapwa niyo chopper. The Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Mitsubishi Montero Sport. Mastery in motion. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Can sleek be used to describe a pickup truck? This showcase checks out the Mazda BT50 3-liter 4x2 at which stop I subscribe as sleek. When Mazda first rolled out the latest generation BT50 pickup, many noticed it was unmistakably a Mazda. It had the signature Mazda grille and many other styling cues found in Mazda sedans and crossovers, including the sleek LED headlights. Still at 5,280mm long, 1,870mm wide, and 1,785mm tall, the BT50 with the dual cab and cargo bed was unmistakably a practical pickup, albeit a little more stylish than other pickups in the local market. The soft curves and subtle lines nonetheless convey strength and durability. The Mazda BT50 3L 4x2 AT is one of the three variants of the new pickup made available locally, the others being the 4x4 AT and the 4x2 MT. The BT50 4x2 is distinguished by the signature Kodo front grille with black finish and body-colored power adjustable and folding side mirrors. It comes standard with LED headlamps, fog lamps, intermittent windshield wipers, aluminum side step, bed liner, 17-inch aluminum wheels with silver finish and 25565R17 tires. The Mazda BT50 interior can be described as SUV-like in look and feel and roomy enough for five good-sized adults. 
And like all mods does, the dash and instrumentation, software and finishes and services can be described as Spartan and minimalist but on the premium side of things. The BT 54x280 comes with comfortable molded seats with black fabric that complement the dark trim and finish of the cabin surfaces. The driver's seat adjusts six ways, the front passengers four ways, but only manually. The urethane steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features switches and buttons for audio and Bluetooth function as well as standard cruise control. There's an overhead console with sunglass holder. The single zone climate control system with manual controls comes with rear vents. Other convenience features include remote keyless entry and power windows with one touch up down function. The BT 54x2 audio system comes with the now commonplace 7 inch LCD touchscreen but USB and Bluetooth connectivity and 6 speaker system. However, it does feature Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. The BT50 is powered by a 2,999cc 4-cylinder DOHC diesel engine with intercooler and turbocharger that maxes out at 190 PS at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 450 Nm of torque from 1,600 to 2,600 RPMs. The 6-speed automatic transmission feels quite efficient at keeping the engine working within the ideal torque range, making it both easy to crawl in traffic or cruise on highways. Mazda is candid about giving the BT50 a light steering feel for maneuvering easily on city streets, elevated and at-grade tollways and countryside roads. The suspension system uses double wishbones in front and leaf springs in the rear. Quite noticeable is the quiet cabin that Mazda says comes from the use of foam fillers in strategic locations around the cabin, along with sound insulating carpets and tighter door and window seals. The Mazda BT-53 L4x2 AT is equipped with a list of standard safety and features that include dual front airbags anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control with traction control, hill descent control, hill launch assist. Rear sensors and reverse cameras help make parking the BT-50 easier. One has to get the BT-50 3L 4x4 to benefit from Mazda Active Safety technology that includes lane departure warning, autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, automatic high beam control, and forward collision warning. Pickups have truly become lifestyle vehicles, and yes, the BT50 is a sleek example of how pickups can define their own status and personality. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24 hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. the lead.
welcome back to More Learning Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. There's another SUV in the market that promises to provide not only style but also substance. It's the MG HS SUV from MG Philippines. MG Philippines described its new offering for 2022 as a modern, feature-laden, safe and value-rich SUV steeped in MG's rich British heritage. We were very happy with the reception with the, our first MG ZS and then the MG RX5. And this opportunity with the MG HS expands the choices of our MG buyers to be able to get again another well-equipped model, a very exciting, young-looking, dynamic SUV with very good specs and yet very affordable positioning. The MG HS is powered by a 1.5 inline 4 DOHT turbocharged petrol engine that produces 169 PS and 250 Nm of torque made into a 7-speed twin-clutch Sportronic transmission. Inside the cabin are sport bucket seats, a dashboard that features 12.3-inch virtual driver information center, and a large 10.1-inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, and multimedia functionality, as well as a panoramic stargazer sunroof. MG Philippines says it's the first product launch of the year that offers premium features and style, a plush and comfortable ride, fine driving dynamics, and a very attainable price point. The most important is we acknowledge that people always now are responsible buyers. So we are not only offering a car that is well equipped, we're making sure that it will be a responsible purchase. Until April 30, 2022, the MG HS will be available at an introductory cash price of 1,158,888 pesos for the MG HS SUV Alpha variant and 1,208,888 pesos for the Trophy variant. The MG HS is just the first of many global models that MG Philippines will launch this year, said Attorney Alberto B. Arcelia, President and CEO of MG Philippines. We'd like to invite everyone to check out the 39 dealerships that we have for MG in the Philippines nationwide. We are offering today a very exciting product, the MG HS. Suzuki vehicle owners in Cavite now have a new and easily accessible service center and showroom for their maintenance needs or for checking out the latest offerings of the Pioneer Compact Car Distributor in the country. Now with the Caviteños, of course, with the next mile in the forefront, we are committed to give them our support in terms of providing the Caviteños with a fuel-efficient product as well as a beautifully designed car with state-of-the-art technology. The newest of Suzuki Philippines network of 72 distributors and service centers nationwide can be found along Antero Soriano Highway in Barangay Batong Dalig in Kawit, Cavite. Sitting on a 2,000 square meter lot, Suzuki Auto Kawit features six service bays and a 360 square meter showroom for six vehicles, with facilities and designs strictly adhering to the brand's corporate standards. For a long time, a lot of the uh, Suzuki car owners here um, had to go elsewhere to get their car serviced, but now we're expecting a bigger volume. That's why we prepared a huge facility for the Cavitenios to enjoy. According to Suzuki Philippines Vice President and General Manager for Automobile, Heichi Suzuki, the new partnership with NXT Mile Motors headed by Mark Angelo Tiongson will help Suzuki reach more Filipinos looking for a reliable mobility partner. To all the Cavitenios out there, or to everyone in the South, I invite you to visit our dealership. Our official Facebook page is at Suzuki Auto Kawit, so you can find all the contact details there. And we promise that once you get here, um, nothing but the best experience awaits you. Mitsubishi Motor Philippines will gift early bird buyers of the new expander with a free two-year maintenance and interior disinfection package. Mitsubishi said that the gift is for buyers who reserve their new expander from March 5 to April 30. The two-year after-sales service plan follows a specific maintenance and parts replacement schedule designed to protect holders from costly repairs down the line while guaranteeing expert technical care and genuine parts. The plan covers the 1,000 to 25,000 km checkup for early buyers of the Expander, Mitsubishi's best-selling 7-seater MPV. According to Takeshi Hara, MMPC President and CEO, the special PMS package for early bird buyers of the Expander aims to provide them an all-encompassing ownership experience that they can freely enjoy and be confident behind the wheel. BMW Group is accelerating its transformation towards sustainable mobility, preparing what it calls a comprehensive leap in technology for its new class. As part of this transformation, BMW is raising production targets for fully electric models. 
already BMW has 15 fully electric models in production, covering around 90% of its current segments. BMW said that these include models like the BMW i4, BMW iX, and Mini SE as well as the four high-volume BMW model series, the 3 Series, 5 Series, the X1, and the X3. The year 2022 will see the launch of the BMW i7. The BMW Group expects sales of its fully electric vehicles to increase rapidly, buoyed by the fast-growing range of products and strong demand for fully electric vehicles. BMW aims to have more than 2 million fully electric vehicles on the roads by 2025. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 35th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.